Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Hey, I want to appreciate everybody that's always been here for me, watch my videos, sharing my videos, and commenting on my videos. I can't thank you enough for those comments. I, you guys humble me. But I do appreciate you being here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to save hundreds of dollars. I mean, I'm serious, hundreds of dollars. If you want to go ahead and climate control your shop, I, you're going to love this. I'm going to show you step by step how to do this with one of these. This is a mini split system. Uh, really, let's see what it comes with here. We got a book, we got batteries. Okay, it's got to be just instructions. Isolator, pads. Looks like there's a remote control somewhere. All right, they give you uh, the cabling. Looks like both power and transfer cable. All right, let's see if we can get this out of here. Come on, come on, come on. That was elegant, wasn't it? There it is. Remote control. All right, guys. Now, you know where I'm from, uh, Central Arizona. It doesn't usually get that hot, but I tell you what, for the last, oh my gosh, since spring hit, I guess, we've had a heat wave that is just something else. Um, I mean, we're up into the 106 when we shouldn't even be close to 90, you know, so, but, so it goes. I grew up in Phoenix, so I know heat. And I even lived in Yuma. And uh, that's that's a lot of heat right there. Okay, let's go ahead and take this off and see what we got. Now, this is a 12,000 BTU unit. See? Okay, 12,000 BTU unit is going to be plenty for this shop. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it up onto the wall here in this back. And if you remember, if you watch my other videos on building this shop, I've already wired for a 120 that hopefully I can just take this and plug it directly in. You know, the people go, well, you gotta, you gotta have the 230, 240 volt. And <clears throat> I've actually had these and put them on tiny houses that I've built. And they work really good uh, and less power, you know, but not for a major room. So anything over, say, 500 square feet to 750, right in there, I would go up in voltage. <laughs> but for that, this should cool and heat this building just fine. So let's go ahead and take a look. Make sure to see what it has. Now this one did not come, uh, it did not come with a template that I could see. Yeah, I don't see a template. <clears throat> so, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Laxo. See, it's really simple. I mean, now this isn't bad. Uh, you just got to make sure when you put it up on the wall that it is level. Okay, uh, cool trick is if you don't know where your stud is, I mean, you might have an idea. I know the center of my building is right here, but what I like, oops, there we go. I like using uh, magnets. There's another one. Chances are, if I just keep going up, it's gonna, we're going to find more and more and more. So, if you don't have a stud finder, you might try this. But that's one way to find studs. Okay, like I was saying that before, is the, all units have a little difference. Uh, like some of the lines may be over here, down here, however you're going to it. But if you're going to take it outside the wall, you might want to look and see where the lines are. Like, and the reason I mention this is when you put yours up on the wall up here, you don't want to be drilling into a stud 
where these are coming out. So plan out where these lines are. If you don't have a template, this is what you need to do. Um, templates are great, yes, but it's just a little common sense and you're going to be all right. We're just going to turn the lines this way and straight out. So I'm going to plan for that when I actually put up the bracket and mark it and make sure where everything is. All right, let's get it on. Now remember, you have to go, a good idea is seven inches from the top. That'll work for most houses. Uh, but since we're going to actually build a air filtration system on top, we're going to go down just a little bit lower. And because we have nine foot walls, but that gives us enough room to build off this way. Okay, so we know that's the center. We know we have 16 inch studs. So if we go to the center here and go 16 inches on this side, 16 inches on this side. Now you need to get the measurement from the tubes going outward to where the center is to those tubes. And ours comes out to 13 inches. We're gonna miss the stud. There's 12 inches, that's gonna be our center point. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that gets in that stud. I'm gonna go ahead and level it out, and then I'm gonna probably put some inserts, because this, this is the main stud. I could move it over so it hits two studs, but this is really not that heavy. To make it nice and easy on you, is put one of these up top here. Make sure it is level. So now that we got this, Nice and level. We're going to put a hole right there, right there, one right there, right here. Now we're just going to go ahead and get us a drill bit that will fit that snugly. Snugly, I like that word. Then we can go ahead and mount it to the wall. Like I said, this unit is really light, so I'm not worried about using these. Okay. Find that. Just so we're going to go ahead and put the rest of these in here. Like I said, it's nice and even with the wall. Next, let's put this back on its little hanging screw. Now you're only going to snug these in. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and get them close and then go back with the uh, actual screwdriver. Okay, uh, what I have noticed with this unit is it doesn't come with the sleeve. So where I'm gonna put the hole, uh, there should be a sleeve that comes out and it says it's optional. So if you uh, buy this unit, which I'll have all the links in the description, uh, you can either do that and buy the optional sleeves. I just cut me one out of two and a half that I had out there. It's less than two and a half actually, but they say a 70 millimeter hole, which is about two and three quarters, but I think I'll be able to squish everything through the wall at that. So I'm going to go ahead and put this through the wall and get all everything outside that way. Smaller hole in the wall. <laughs> now these are things you shouldn't be, you know, afraid to do. Now remember though, when you do drill this hole, it has to be at an angle. Okay, remember what I said? Drain line always has to have an angle down. So let's go ahead and get this uh, drilled in. I hate drilling a <laughs> hole in my wall, but there we go. You may need a bigger one, but see, this will work just fine for that. Um, but I bought this DeWalt hole saw kit that is just handy as can be. And if you're uh, needing something like this, I'll have a link in the description for you. All right, so we get through the uh, hard part. <laughs> just kidding. With this, that it's gonna go out fine. I think it's gonna be just fine. I'm going down on an angle. So an easiest way to do it is if you Center this out, just drop it down about a quarter inch or so. Get it started. Now 
Now we know this isn't going to set exactly. So that the way that is. And then cut it with your chop saw. So what I want to do is I'm going to go outside and go ahead and mark it so I know where to put it from there. Okay, on this one, you know the first thing is we got to go ahead and hook up the wiring so we can run it out the back, okay? Now the wiring is really simple stuff. This is, see this is power wire. You can tell by just the length of it for one. Uh, but yeah, you'll go to a power there and you'll put your own plug. This is the wiring because it's a four wire. So that way you control the unit outside through this. So it connects to the unit outside with this one. No problem. It, easy, easy stuff. Now for those pros out there, uh, I'm just trying to go over this for everyone. Okay, not just uh, not just the ones that already know how to do some of it. And, but let's go ahead and flip it over. And I already got it dirty on my fantastic desk. All right, we're gonna go and pull a few of these things. What we need to do is we're gonna, we wanna open this like that. Now I'm gonna go and put on my glasses so I can see. Oh, and I do wanna remind you that don't go just by anybody's video. Read the manual for your particular uh, unit just so you're familiar, more familiar with it. Uh, because there are some subtle differences between uh, manufacturers and so forth. So always read the manual. Now I'm going to show you on this unit. So I'll take you all the way through everything. We'll get this dude wired up. Okay, inside you're going to see where it has, you know, how you need to hook it up. It's all right here. We need to take this panel off to get to the wiring. And we'll go and get that started. Now, let me just give you a real quick rundown on these. These are your screens for it. This is your filtering. The air will come in the top up here. And then we're gonna go ahead and make something for a better filtration uh, for later. But this is just to kind of give you an idea. So, take this off like that. And there we go. That sample. So you want to go ahead and hang it off your table just a little bit right there. And that way you can run the wire up through. First, you want to go ahead and take this strap down. Uh, like I said, don't lose any of these. Just put them aside for a minute. Let's go ahead and get the wire. Got to kind of weasel it through. Okay, so make sure we loosen these dudes up. One that says ground, which is which is this one. I took off this because it's a circle that you have to like so, just to try to keep pressure on. All right, I'm just gonna kind of leave it loose there for a minute. Now, now these colors here, really it doesn't matter as long as you can, you know, you hook them up the same on the outside unit. But the good thing about this unit is it comes numbered. Uh, so you got one, two, and that's gonna be the third. So let's go ahead and get number one. Go ahead and get that dude on there. Number two, let's go ahead and slide it under that one. Pretty easy so far, huh? Okay, so make sure that you connect that number two up. Now, number three. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this back on. There we go. See, they're still loose under it, but hey, they're on. <laughs> All right, so next we're going to go ahead and slide this one back on and screw it in. There we go. 
So we got the wire hooked up, that's all hooked up. We go ahead and close this. Okay, what's the next thing to do? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna mount this up. I'm gonna go ahead and run everything out the wall and down. Now I'm not gonna place the outside unit in until I'm done doing that, just so I don't have to cut anything and flare anything. It, it just be for a, a nicer install. So I'm gonna try to get it as well as I can. But what I will do is I'll go ahead and put a video in of how to do the flaring and so forth and tool you may need if you don't have this option. I'm gonna show you how to properly flare the HVAC copper tubings. Now I'm gonna show you the tool that I use. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know so you, it takes a little bit of that scurriness out that you can get the job done and get it done right. Let's take a look and I'll meet you back here. We're gonna go ahead and show you how to make, make some of the best flares that you can make with this item here. Um, I tell you what, I love this thing. It's really a great item that you can use that has all the different sizes. This does, if you look at this right here, which is really, now I see these bump. It actually smooths out and helps from cracking the flare. So you can actually crack these pretty easily and not even know it, which is going to cost you a whole lot more once you do that and have to <laughs> pay for another line. Another cool thing is when you have this open like this and say you're going to insert your tubing because this item here is down, it has a stop right there. And what that does is it says, okay, I'm good to go. Then you just tighten this down. I usually do it with my other hand the other way, but that's all right. Okay. And it's going to take you to where you're just going to snug where you know you're kind of bottomed out. And then you yeah, go ahead and remove it. Unscrew this just so this will pop out of this little uh, holster. And there you go. Now you can do this and you can do it with all these different sizes. Most of them are going to be quarter inch and half inch uh, if you're doing on the HVAC. It just turns like that, and this one down here turns. And there's your stop. It really works great. I'm going to have a link to this in the description, because I, I, you're going to love to have this if you uh, don't already have one. And it's one that you can buy. It's compact. It's You don't have a bunch of uh, pieces that you have to put together. You just slap that dude in there and just give it a crank, and you're ready to go. Uh, made in America and just works great. So I would say get one of those and one of these and put it in your toolbox. See, it really isn't that bad, is it? It, it works well. That tool, I'll have a link in the description for you. You're going to love that thing. I mean, it just, like I said, you don't have it all in pieces like some. You don't, you know, it just is compact. It's right there. can be used at any time real quick. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get these taped up. Okay, now the chances of this <laughs> pushing out that sleeve up there is, it's probably gonna, but I can go ahead and push it back in from the outside in once this is in a mounted, so I'm not really worried about it. But I will get this taped up as tight as I can to help my endeavor. Okay, that's to get us through. Let's get it stuck to the wall. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set the unit on my uh, step here. Get this bed out first. Next is shoving this uh, through. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and put it on my shoulder, like so. 
get the rest of it shoved out. Just be careful that you don't drop it. See, I told you it would take that out. <laughs> All right. Now that it's out, inside's done. <laughs> Just got to take these off. So as you can see, it really isn't that hard to this part here either. It looks nice. It's up out of the way. And like I said, we're going to build a, uh, we're going to go ahead and build a uh, filter unit for it. So it acts like a dust collector because <laughs> you will be sucking some through. Okay, this comes with the other part of the unit. Uh, just real quick so I can go over it with you. Now this is what they call a line set. Now if you have a longer distance to your from your head unit to your condenser, you will need to add additional fluid and uh, refrigerant. And there's calculators online for that, so that's not a big deal. Yes, the condenser on these come pre-charged, so it's full of freon. So you know, if you have to go longer, it's not a big deal. That's one of the most asked questions I, I get. So yes, you would have to add more refrigerant for the additional length of lines. If it's only a few feet, I don't usually worry about it. <laughs> okay, what else you get? All right, this is what they call the drain line. Okay, you have to have it on. Now go from the head unit outside, always has to be on a downward slope, no matter where you're at or where you put your unit or run your lines. People ask me, can you run your lines through the attic? Yes. Can you run your lines through the basement? Yes. Can you run on and on and on? As long as your drain line, that has to always have a downward slope. And you really want it to go away from your foundation. If you don't have concrete or a patio or something. But these units do put out a lot of condensation. So you definitely need this, and remember that if you're gonna if you're gonna install this yourself. This is your nylock tape. This is a quick plug for underneath the unit, out the outside unit, where you can run that condensation out also. And this is it's a uh, kind of a nylon putty. Plasticin is what it's called. See? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use all this stuff as we go. This is usually a setup for a round where you go out the wall. So now you know the line set, the drain line, uh, and any other questions that I've been asked mostly is how to charge the lines, how to back in the lines, and do all that. I'm gonna show you all that once we get outside. Oh, hey guys, and if you would, if you're not subscribed yet, now would be a perfect time. Hit that little subscribe button down there and hit that bell notification also. Just bring that up. And it'll notify you when another video comes out, and along with it, we're having giveaways and so forth, so you don't miss anything. Okay, now that we have the inside unit put in, now is the time to go out and set up the outside unit, the condenser itself. Now, Real quick, I just want to show you what these is kind of hold here and roll it out so it's straight. So it's really, you know, an easy way to do it, no kinking. So we're going to go ahead and get this laid out to the best we can. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll roll out the other one. We'll go outside, we'll get them hooked up to the outside unit where we pushed it out the wall, and we'll continue out there. Now, when I put this unit out there, what I did is I bought a pre-made platform instead of using, uh, you know, forms and pouring the concrete and doing all that. It was cheaper for me just to get the platform set, and it was easy. <laughs> so. We're going to put the isolators in. We're going to just use some lag screws into it. Mount the unit on the floor or on the ground outside. Uh, let's go ahead and go up there and start that up. So 
So you're holding one side, this one because it's welded. This side is the one that you want to screw. So this, this one here you hold real tight while you do it. Now I like to get them snug and then another quarter turn usually does the trick. Now, as you can see, I put the putty up top there. That's to, you know, keep the bugs and stuff out and seal it nice. And here's your drain hose. It has one end will go on, one end won't. And run it down. And I'm running the lines out to measure where I need to level this out at. So do a good job with this one here because you want to level this out as best you can and make sure it's uh, about 12 inches away from the wall. Yep, 12 inches. All right, now we can go ahead and set the unit. But what I did here is I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything's on, everything's set. We started putting the decorative cover behind it. And these are really great. I got a link in the description for you. But we usually will do this and get it lined out that way. But it covers them so the, the sun won't roast it. Now, with these corners, you're going to see you're going to have a problem making the turn with that. So this is where you're going to go ahead and mark it out. There's a, actually a, a groove on the other side that you can go by, but it's doing the same thing here. Now, you can cut it with all different things, uh, you know, from... You know, scissors to this, to the dikes. Um, I use these because they just seem to work, and I had them handy right there. But there you go. Now you have a nice open area. Now I drill this. It's about a one-inch hole. Uh, that way I can run the, the actual drain line out instead of running it all the way with the other uh, lines. I'll remove the tape right there. My hand is on just to, so I get a better fit to it. But I'm going to go ahead and run it underground and out. Now setting up these, uh, I like to set them up before I do this, but they didn't come yet. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're still missing pieces. So we're waiting to do that. You can cut it with a hacksaw, a regular saw, your chop saw, and go ahead and get it fitted in. Sorry about the grunting when I get up and down. Hey, I'm getting older. And use uh, some wood screws for this because it'll actually make it easier on you so you don't have to pre-drill. All right, let's get the line set set up and see where we're sitting. So I did not want to cut and flare the lines just to make it a faster install. But I ended up having to cut and flare the lines. <laughs> but here you're going to go ahead and just finger tighten them to, you know, just make sure you get it on there and the threads go on so you do not cross thread. Use the big crescent wrench there just to hold so it doesn't twist and then you want to go ahead and tighten uh, the nut there that way you don't just use one wrench to <laughs> it might rip that thing off now these here these are the fittings you're going to need one or the other um, now I do like the one where you remove the uh, the Schrader valve in there, it really works fantastic. I'll go over more of that later. Uh, but yeah, you can remove it. You close that there and it's a free flow right there. So you can either add Freon or suck down the lines. You're going to vacuum the lines there. But since not everybody does it all the time, 
you can use this adapter right here. It's just a uh, five sixteenths to a quarter. So your actual AC lines will hook up with it. So I put them on there and get them as tight as I can with my hand and then add about a quarter turn. It's not uh, hard to do at all. Uh, like I said, you just get that set so you're not gonna leak when you do it. You don't want leaks. Now remember the blue line goes to the actual unit, the, uh, the condenser, and then the yellow line goes to your pump. Now, you're not gonna do anything with the red line. So, now you can go ahead and start sucking it down. As you can see, it is below the zero. It's going towards the negative. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna go ahead and let this run and uh, maybe do the electrical on, uh, <laughs> get that taken care of. You wanna let it run for a little while, at least, 30 minutes at minimum 30 minutes okay with the electrical remember i was telling you about the ground the one two and three you have the actual uh power coming in that's your neutral line and your load line now remember it's always the hot is black white is neutral green is ground now 40 minutes later <laughs> we come out we close down the that side of the gauges so that's shut now and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let it sit. 35 minutes later, we come back. It hasn't moved, which is great. So now we're going to go ahead and let's open her up. That's a 3 16 hex wrench that you just go ahead and open that up. You keep turning until it stops. Because it won't allow it to come all the way out, by the way. So you, uh, you'll hear the sound of the pressure in, on the lines, the actual refrigerant going through the lines. Okay, so you open both lines up all the way and listen for any hissing of, I mean, you shouldn't have a leak if your gauges are right. You shouldn't have a leak. So let's go ahead and shut these down or put on the caps, I should say. All right, now we're gonna go and take this off. You're gonna have a little bit of refrigerant come out, but it's just do it real quick, as quick as you can, and very little come out, so it's not enough to mean much to you, so. Now, if you like, you can also go over it with the water, uh, a soapy water spray, just to see if it bubbles up anywhere, but this is why I didn't enclose the lines all the way yet. So just go back through and make sure you just snug up all the caps. And since we, like I said, we didn't have any leaks, we're gonna go ahead and finish up uh, taping this off with the ni nylon tape. Hey, I'm getting faster and faster. But yeah, it's uh, these here are really great covers because they just snap on. Like I said, I'm still waiting for the <laughs> rest of the kit. Kind of hard to get some things nowadays. And I do like using the four inch instead of the three inch cover. It, you know, it's not that much more and it just is so much easier running the lines through and any, you know, corners and so forth you have to go through. So we'll get all this put, put together, get it closed up the best we can at this time. So we'll go ahead and get this knocked out. Kind of like a screw gun there. Now it was 91 degrees in here when we turned this on. 
And that's inside the shop. <laughs> 102, I think, was outside. We ended up getting some pretty cold temperatures coming out of that about five minutes in because you got to kind of let it run on high and cold position. It'll just, it kind of wears it in, gets everything, the pump going and lubed up. Okay, next what we need to do is we're going to put the remote control holder. <laughs> okay, what you want to do is you usually want to choose uh, like where you're going to be sitting most or the opposite side of the room. Uh, but just to get it away from like right underneath the unit. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this one right here. go that way sits right here okay the main tools that you're gonna need to do this job and i tell you what for what you're gonna save doing it yourself this is really nothing now you can you're getting you can save money in so many different ways if you don't want to tackle this part of it and you just want to do the install you can do the install and call in uh you know a professional hvac to charge it up and do all that you know, so you can do it that way. Uh, you're still going to get hit pretty good on uh, <laughs> service charge and come out and check the system. But now here's the tools that I rec that you really should have is this is a kit that you can buy. I'll have the link in the description as always. Um, but this was relatively inexpensive. I mean, actually, it's very inexpensive. Uh, you need to get this fitting here, which is a 5 16 to a quarter, uh, to hook up to this. Now you can also get this one, which I really like. Uh, but this is where you can take out the uh, Schrader valve, which I showed you earlier out there. But this is really nice for, uh, you know, if you're going to charge the system, you're going to do any of that. You can pull the Schrader valve out and it sucks it back up in here. You turn that. So now this is from here this way. And that's where you put your uh, refrigerant or vacuum on that. So, but you know, not everybody wants to go that way, but I'll have it in the description anyways. It uh, does the same as this. This is a easier. That's why I showed you with this. The other one, if you're going to do more than one, you might invest it. It's not that expensive, but next is coffee. I want to thank, <laughs> I won't say the name, uh, but the person who said, they know I love coffee and I'm, I lived in Hawaii for a while. And I mentioned that I like Halo Mill coffee. Uh, I got a big thing of medium roast, my favorite. Uh, thank you so much. I can't, I mean, that was really great of you. Okay. Now, if you don't, if you don't, don't want to just curl up your uh, line set into your HV, that's fine. But if you don't, this is a flaring tool that handles all kinds of measure, uh, bigger, lower size flaring tools. I recommend this one. To no end. Uh, you saw it in the video there. This is the cutter I used. You can get the smaller one. It's, but that's a good one there. You need two crescent wrenches, one big, one small, and that's just to hold to make sure that you don't spin it off. And this one here is for tightening. And the three sixteenths Allen wrench. Open up the main refrigerant valves. So that's actually pretty much it. I mean, just made your little hand tools, if any. Uh, electrical wasn't bad. And you saw how I did it. I don't have an AC disconnect. I have an actual plug. But I have it in a GFCI plug out there. That, that's how I hooked it up. You saw the wiring inside. Uh, it's really, really simple. Now, I showed you how easy it was. You can do this. I know you can if you have any common sense whatsoever. I tried to answer all your questions because I did get a lot of answer or questions on uh, another mini split install that I tried to answer in this so it'd be a lot easier for you. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Hit that bell notification. It'll just let you know when we're having another uh, video come out 
or if there's a giveaway or something like that. Also, if you like my content, please give me a thumbs up. That helps the channel out so much and sharing it would be great too if you could. But if you could like it, that would be great and be a subscriber. Don't cost nothing. Now, if you do have questions, which I understand, and I answer every single question I get. So, I spend a lot of time in the morning doing that. Um, but if you do have questions, put them in comments, guys. Uh, I will help any way I can. But this unit's working really well right now. And we'll do an update on it as soon as we get a little bit more into it. And that way we'll kind of know exactly how well this unit does work. Now, if you check the prices on this unit, you're going to flip. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not uh, all that much. And I, all like I said, I have it in the description. Check it out if you're into it and go from there. So until next time, I appreciate you being here and thank you so much for the copy and your support, all of you. We'll see you.